In this video, we're going to add two methods to the LLS class. The first is going to be a swap method. So we added a similar method to the uh, to the a list class um, where we're swapping two elements in the list. So we're going to start out taking two positions. And just like we've done with some of those other methods that check that our positions are valid, we want to make sure that these positions are valid too. So we want to make sure that first position is greater than or equal to one, and that first position is less than or equal to number of entries, and that second position is greater than or equal to one, and that second position is less than or equal to number of entries. So assuming that those things hold, we can go ahead and perform our swap. So how can we do this swap? Well, let's take a look at what other methods we have. Let's in particular, um, we have get entry that might help us. And we also have that private helper method that I lost track of that's called get node at. Hmm. So get node at is probably our best bet, right? Because get node at allows us to access the node at a particular position, given the position number, okay? And we satisfy the precondition that one is less than given position, less than or equal to given position is less than or equal to number of entries, because that's the check we just made. So what we can do is we can get, have a node, first node, ah, first node is taken, <laughs> um, first to swap uh, will be get node at the first position and node the second to swap will be get node at second position. Okay, so now we've got two nodes. What we want to do is swap the actual data. So what we need to do is get out the data. First data is going to be first to swap dot data. Or actually, if we want to follow the convention of this class, we'll call get data. And second data is going to be the second to swap dot get data. And then remember, whenever you do a swap, you need actually three variables. So we'll declare a variable of type temp and assign it to first data. And now we can actually just swap the data. So how do we swap the data? We swap it out in the node. So what we're going to say is first data or first, sorry, to swap. This is a node. Set the data to be second data. And then second to swap, that's a node, set the data to be temp. And that will essentially swap the data in the chain. So if our original chain was one, two, three, four, five, and we wanted to swap two and four, what this is going to say is it'll get the first data will be two, second data will be four, and then the node that points to two will get second data, and the node that points to four will get first data. Now we haven't changed anything about their nodes, so the structure of our nodes is the same because we haven't changed any dot next pointers. What we've done is we've swapped out the data pointed to by two nodes. Okay, so there is a swap method. And then the last method we're going to implement is similar again to the one that we implemented with a list. We're going to implement a L list get less than. I think I called it get all less than last time. So we will take in some sort of comparable element, uh, entry I'll call it, and we want to return a new list of elements, uh, a new list that contain elements only less than this particular element. Okay. And all the same caveats that I mentioned for a list in terms of change, we really should change a list to only take comparable objects, etc. apply here as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new L list. We'll call it the smaller list. Okay. And we now want to go through, iterate through our list. So what we could do, of course, is write essentially the exact same implementation that we did for a list, where I do something like this. Start at one. And get the entry out of each position. So something like this. 
Okay, I could absolutely do that, and then I can go ahead and compare if entry dot compare to my current data is let's see if the entry is uh, bigger than my current data, then the smaller list dot add it. Wait, <laughs> dot add my current data. Sorry, and then return the smaller list. Okay, this code will absolutely work. Right, this code will work. It uses the methods appropriately. It says every time I need to get an entry out, um, I just call the get entry method. But this method is very, very inefficient. Why is it inefficient? We have to think about how get entry is implemented. So let's go back and look at get entry. Get entry is implemented by invoking the get node at method. Get node at what it does is it cycles through the entire chain every time it's called. So if I again have a list one, two, three, four, five, when I call uh, get entry position one, it cycles through the list to get one. And then when I call two, it points current to one and then current dot next to get to two. And then when I call got entry three, it points current to one then current gets current dot next to point to two, then current get current dot next to point to three. When I call get entry four, it points current to first node, then current gets current dot next to point to two, then current gets current dot next to point to three, then current gets current dot next at point to four. And I'm sure you're getting tired of me repeating these, this phrase over and over again, and your code's gonna get tired of running it over and over again. So that's very, very inefficient. What we essentially have is a nested loop. We have our loop here where we're going through the chain once, but get entry goes through the chain every time it's called. So we're basically nesting two loops together, and that's very inefficient. We'll learn more about how to measure that inefficiency in a future week, but for now, it's enough to think about just the idea that every time I want to get the entry, I have to start from the beginning and loop through that many times. That's not very efficient. Make sure you understand that idea of why that's not a good approach, and if you're not clear about that, post questions. So, well, this will work, but it's very inefficient, okay? So instead, what we can do is we can take advantage of the fact that we are inside the outlist class, which means we have access to all those instance data variables, and we can use that to make a better solution. So what we can do is we can declare a temporary node or current node and then just cycle through and check well current node um, is not equal to null. We can get the data from the current node. And again, to be consistent. And then we can say, okay, if entry.compare to current data, again, is greater than zero, Add it to the smaller list. And either way, make sure we set current node gets current node.next. So this allows us to loop through the array once, one pass through, rather than looping through a nested amount of times. So if our list held 10 elements, this loop would execute 10 times, this one would execute on order of 100. It's a big difference. This is much, much, very, very much less efficient. <laughs> it's not a very efficient way of saying that, but I think you get the idea. This is a much better solution. Of course, I have to write the right syntax as well. Okay. So in the homework assignment, when I've asked you to take advantage of the fact that you can access these nodes to write an efficient solution, this is what I mean. If there's ways to, multi to, re to avoid repeatedly calling methods like get entry um, or get node at, you want to do that. And if you can do that by taking advantage of the fact that you can create a pointer to the first node and cycle through just once, that's how you can make your method more efficient. Okay? If you have questions about that, as always, post them online.